welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Uh, yeah, Duke Nukem Forever for Linux came out early access, and we can finally quit talking about it. Looking forward to that, and Valve has changed something in TF2, so spool up your re-drives. Steam sales are coming, and coming, and coming sticky and now you can play wow natively on linux in a browser dying light runs contrary to its name shining a new light of updates and the internet has beaten nvidia to the punch releasing a list which may or may not be accurate about 1070 ti specs mm, kind of looking forward to that if i can find the right input here so we can switch back to here. So I can say it's early. We're all discombobulated. You, hi, I'm, I'm Vince hey, Stone hey. here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel. All under Linux, as always, on all ends. It's kind of brilliant. Uh, joined every week. Uh, that is uh, fresh from Finland. Still in Finland. You got to catch a plane after the show. I, I literally do. Packing up, going to the airport. It's going to be great. And um, from Britannia on the island, the white Portuguese himself. Hello. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like a white Mexican, only, you know, more disappointing. No, no. He, he's <laughs> actually a boat. <laughs> a boat in a really crappy movie. Right. That you just keep watching going, oh, that really, oh all right. <laughs> pa- page, we call him Pedro McPedro face. Pa- Pedro McPedro face. <laughs> and together with Shadow Realm Dynamic, joining us live at, again this weird early time. But hey, we do it every now and then. That help us form that last little bit. Known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, what's going on in our lives? Before we dive into the horse, that that sounds nowhere near as hot. Well, maybe it kind of did sound as hot as I meant it to. Jordan, what's up in your last day in Finlandia? Oh, well, not much. I, I once again ate expensive pizza. No, I, I saw Opeth on uh, Monday. That was pretty cool. I found out about that show last minute. Uh, they they did a cover of "You Suffer" by Napalm Death live, so that was that was cool. I still want to see Oprah cover it though. Oh man, That'd it'll be, be full of bees. <laughs> oh yeah, Pedro. Well, around here, I uh, sent back the uh, last uh, laptop that I had, which uh, well, that'll be a review coming soon, and uh, I will uh, leave here my public apology to Jordan for having to fix my English yet again. <laughs> 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 it's like you have a love affair with commas. I need to tell Nori about this because I think you have a problem. <laughs> Splice commas and run on sentences, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, 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 but you know what runs on... Actually, no, Ben, what, what are you up to? What's oh. with the hat? What's with the hat? Tell oh, us. What's with the story. hat? Uh, well, I bought new gloves, which I, I don't have with me, and apparently they, they had hats near the gloves. Listen to the pre-pre-shows and if you want the story about... Uh, Man, that, that weird experience, but um, had to buy the hat. I was like, that is ridiculous enough for me to wear in public. So definitely threw that on. Uh, I talked about last week, couldn't get the Vulcans working with Feral. Talked with Alex at Feral. We wrapped back and forth for a few days, figured out what was going on and how to set to make sure it was running my 980. We got it up and working, kind of in the progress. May or may not have accidentally... Um, seen everything that feral was working on You've seen a certain list on a certain tab of a certain uh, website there, there's the thing and i, I i'm saying it just i can't tell anyone because i'm not going to be that guy but haha i know something um <laughs> it's the age-old question is it better to know or not to know it's actually i'd rather not know because you don't want to do the dick move and be like i can confirm this this and this cause i'd rather just not fucking know to be honest with you mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but but uh, you know you know who doesn't know the horse because it's dead <laughs> and we're beating it week after week after week after week. It's a steam sale. Yeah, so this is from PC Games End. Links to this all in our show notes. Uh, we got the uh, dates for the upcoming next three sales. They're all going to be happening at the end of their respective months. There's going to be the Ookie Spoopy Halloween sale, the the autumn sale, and the uh, Christmas sale. And they're about happening. Um, well, uh, Halloween sale happens October 26th, autumn sale November 22nd, and Christmas sale is December 21st. So, it's all at the end of the month. It's the, you know, ha- Halloween's over, it's Thanksgiving time, it's Christmas time, it's all those times at once that people can get together and sell you shit. Because, you know, yep. capitalism. 
But, you know, once upon a time, there was actually occasions to um, get excited about Steam sales because you could pick up some games for cheap. But now, thanks to, like, Humble and the limited game selection on Linux these days, there's not really much to look forward to in the, in the holiday season. That said, if uh, Tyranny or Pyre goes on sale for too, super cheap, I'm going to yoink those. Like, nobody's business. Yeah, there's still, like, the those games that came out that you wanted, but they came out at close to AAA pricing. Yeah, the, I will probably be buying myself some, uh, well, I honestly don't know, but I have a long wish list, so chances are that'll be slimming down a little bit. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess we're kind of in a privileged position because we said that, well, I sent out emails to people it's like, yo, can we have some keys? And they go, yeah, you can have some keys. Or sometimes they'll actually use the contact form on the website. It's like, here's some keys. And then Ven forwards the email to me because people can't read. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, that's definitely a thing. I got to say this, you know, with the sales, you no, know, I don't kind of with what Pedro says after five years, we pretty much get anything that we really want to play. You know, mm -hmm. thanks again with your support. I mean, worst case scenario, we just buy it. Um, but for me personally, with my stuff is I will once every other year, or once every other. sale, there'll always be that one game that was stupid price that just went beyond reasonable where you just got to buy it because it's like 9.99 or something like that and it's normally 60 what stinky cash yeah. is curse of the ravens cry yeah something like that <laughs> uh i think most of the time is i end up just using sales to buy like people on our friends usually just people in chat realm or on discord if, if i see something on your wish list i i'm not saying everyone just start friending me all of a sudden because i gotta be in the right mood to do that but uh like oh they want that game yeah just make it rain you know hashtag lgc cares old men then you know all that fun stuff but hey that's good news but uh something that is i don't know i'm not gonna say this is bad news ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i'm gonna say this is uh grab some in popcorn news because this is uh definitely going to rile a lot of people up. hey man well, no you quit, quit being crazy this is only uh update updating some core mechanics at team fortress 2 <laughs> what could go wrong i mean i i personally genuinely 100 percent look forward to all the screeching i mean they're the listen put some new maps in here They've changed uh, several ways uh, the weapon balance, loadout balance, and all that mm -hmm. stuff works. And the classes, the way they act. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's it's, it's going to be fun. Sort of listening. You, you, if 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 you if you listen right now, if you take off your headphones or whatever, you cut down podcast just a little, just for a second. <laughs> you can already hear this, just that <laughs> coming about uh, bad or pointless changes. You can hear it across like oceans. You can hear it on the other side of the planet. It's like the Tsar Obama, man. So, what do you think? Like the most? Uh, I was kind of shocked that. I'd expect like a bug fix update or something like that. This this is a massive update to a uh, storefront to sell hats. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you, you know there, there there is there is a game attached to it that you know certain people are are very attached to, and yeah. it, it it it's it's basically become like one of these League of Legends or um well I was going to say TF two but that's literally what we're talking about right now. <laughs> <This> <laughs> where, it, it, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's had this it's evolved into so that it has this core dedicated fan base that um, people people are you 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 don't really see new people getting into TF two because the invest the time investment is just so high right now. So right now it's just your core set of let's call them toxic fans mm. that uh, <laughs> that you know just ruin it for everyone, but are still pumping so much money into the system because they love their hats that uh, that yeah Valve uh, feels the need to shake things up every once in a while. Well, uh, yeah, and it makes sense that uh, Team Fortress Two still has as big a player base as it does because it's also a very uh, low system requirement game. Um, just about anyone with a recent enough Intel processor with the integrated graphics can at least play. Uh, well, I mean, Team listen, Fortress man, 2. You, you can definitely play, but one of the lowest system requirements for it that uh, you got to miss is it's free to play. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that, that that's like 9000% a real thing. And you know, I'm, my video is jumping around. I'm resetting it. That's why it's on me. Sorry, everyone. Uh, 
I, I got into Team Fortress 2 when it was a Quake mod, playing it over dial-up. So, so yeah. that's Team Fortress, not classic. The, the OG Team, Team Fortress. Fortress. Right, <laughs> what the game's based on. And I loved that. Never really got into Team Fortress 2. It's one of the first games Valve released for Linux on Steam. And yeah, we, we, we were all expecting Left 4 Dead, but now they came out with uh, TF2. Yeah, and I, I tried to play it, and I have nothing against it, but it's like, man, I, I, I'm not like 15 anymore, so <laughs> it didn't really appeal to me uh, at this point uh singing with this particular genre i'd rather see paladins have a linux version i know i'm not alone there i know our french uh uh californian representative uh it, it, mr matthew commandant he's also big into paladins so yeah i'd be very happy if paladins come on high res you can it, do it. It's, it's, it's all about the over waifu man but you know I, guys it's, it's it's time to get a little serious we've been joking around a little too much this is the uh, Talos Principle VR. It is the brand new title from Crow Team. People were railing about, oh, why is this DLC? And Crow Team basically said, because there is an obscene amount of work that goes into converting a game from flat to VR, and we're not gonna we're not gonna take the financial hit on it, which is entirely understandable because these guys put a lot of work into their games and they're fully supporting <laughs> Linux, which this one does. Um, I don't think Talos really needed a VR version, but it, I, it, I feel it's one of those things where Serious Engine supports it now, so let's give it a shot. Well, I, I mean, um, come on, seriously, this is, ah, uh, no pun intended. This, uh, th- this is from Crow Team, whose, like, byline should be Crow Team. Why the hell not? Uh, this, 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 this is true. Supposedly, though, this will work on your radio and card uh, for VR, which I find interesting because... How well we don't know the 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 VR market Vulcan, is as small Vulcan as small enough things. as it is. Well, yes, but here, here's the thing: the 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 VR market is tiny. The VR market on Linux is really tiny, and the <laughs> VR market on a on Linux using AMD is smaller than my dick. So we may <laughs> never find out. Um, but according to Empty, uh, it works fairly well under the Linuxes. He gave this a shot. There's still some, it's still not fully VR in the title screen, but once you get in game, it's VR. What, one thing that does kind of interest me though, is there are timing and movement based puzzles in, uh, the Talus principle. So they give you an option to teleport around. I'm curious how that actually impacts the balance of the puzzles. I don't know. You, you gotta imagine that they've probably thrown some VR Pacific stuff in. To the actual puzzle mechanics, possibly, other than just the bunny hop VR movement things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the only thing that's not really working on the Linux build, according to one Mr. T Hand, who's probably at a hand egg game right now, um, but we're still thinking about you, buddy, is like the intro, just like the very beginning of the game doesn't, there's the, no visuals on that, but there's audio to let yeah. you know something's going on to make you really angry. Like, whoa, great, it kind of works. And then everything kicks on, and that's working on his Ryzen box. Pretty good. What was the price of this Krita? I think it's, it's twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. 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 Or it's probably yeah, th- like thirty th- nine ninety nine. Thirty six ninety nine euros, according to my fucked up Steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be like thirty nine ninety nine U.S. dollars. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so like, like I said, about the same price as the Talos principle, which again is reasonable. They put a lot of work into this. So, oh, no, no, no. and uh, I was uh, I follow Crow Team on Twitter, and one of the developers was saying this was how kind of how we envision envisioned the game from the get go, but the technology wasn't there at the time, so this is the version we wanted to put out. So hey, I, I, it's it's the James Cameron excuse. No, I mean I definitely <laughs> dig it because I, I fully believe, like in 2017, Crow Team is the id software for Linux that id software was for Linux back in the mid to late nineties where there's that one or possibly two people inside the company. It's what I want to believe that it's just Linux, all the things this is like, this shit's running on Linux. I don't care if I got to do it in my, you know, 20% time or whatever, but we know it's going to come out and it runs and it runs good. We've seen, you know, great work with the Sirius Sam fusion series. They, nobody Vulcans better than the guys and gals. Oh, Crow absolutely. Team. I mean, those are the ones you go to when you need the Vulcan sauce. But um, there's been a game, gentlemen, that <laughs> has been in development for nine years. Um, we're, start, we're slowly starting to lose the Vaporware Whipping Boys. 
This game was announced when George Bush was still president. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like ages ago now? <laughs> j- just a bit. Uh, this game was announced two years before Humble Bundle was. And why, why was it? Where's your tie-in? Because it's from the creators, the guys who came up with Humble Bundle. Mm-hmm. Suck, suck it, suck it, IGN. Um, <sighs> so, but but here's a, here's the real question though: Was all that time in the oven worth it? Well, you know that that is kind of one of the curious things, man. I mean, they they were not kidding about this wicked short beta period. They weren't because last week they said we're going to have a short beta period. Monday the game's out. Uh, <laughs> That was definitely a thing. And the reviews, if you want to find honest reviews, sort by purchased negative. Those are your positive, like the real <laughs> ones. And most of them seem pretty legit and kind of on par with what I expected, saying that the difference, the development, the work that they put into it recently, because we were talking last week, they, they just seemed to make a mad push to get this thing out of the door. It's still is basically... That, is that the chicken lady from Kids in the Hall? Quite possibly. <laughs> it's they're, a blank chicken. <laughs> it's basically a glorified sandbox with a slapdash story mode, and it does feel like it's just rushed out the door. There's just not much of a story there, if any at all. Single players like, meh. But the one thing I want to know, the one thing, especially with uh, you know who. And the thing that went down last week is, what kind of score is it going to get on IGM? Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say six Mountain Dews out of ten Doritos. Okay. <laughs> See, if this gets anything below a nine out of ten, I'm going to be very surprised. Well, here, here's like one of the sick burns, man, because all through the beta period, it's been twenty nine ninety nine. Now that it's out, all those people can celebrate by knowing uh, it's now $9 cheaper. Um, yeah, suck a dick early <laughs> access people. Mm-hmm. Suck a dick. Uh, it only requires the Passmark CPU 1000 or better. So just make sure you wait 10,000 or one. Yeah, 1000. No, yeah, 1000. 1000. One, one the Passmark the GPU time. 500. Uh, so it seems 20 gigs for that. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that worries me. Pedro, you, you can speak more to this. They're being really stingy with review keys. Oh, yes. That's never yes, a good are. sign when a company's stingy with review keys. So, uh, yeah, uh, what Ben's alluding to is the fact that I sent them an email. And on Wednesday, while we were doing Linux Weekly Wednesdays, I got an email back saying, oh, yes, we have been providing some outlets with keys, but only, well, they didn't exactly say it like this, but uh, only the relevant ones. And you guys, well, you're not relevant in our books, so you're not getting any keys. Well, so, uh, re- relevant, relevant in our books, meaning not guaranteed <laughs> to give us a positive score. <laughs> yes, not IGN, basically. <laughs> L- listen, listen, we just need more Mountain Dew. <laughs> and like just rub, just crust, rub Doritos crust all over us. I don't know, no, man. it's a nine out of ten in IGN, and like the uh, the little blurb that they're going to pick is compelling. Compelling. <laughs> I, I I'm compelled to do something, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's all not compelled to pay. I mean, I, I oh said, no, <laughs> that's way even thirty percent off at sixteen pounds. I'm still not paying that. Nope. Uh, <laughs> that the, I, the, I, the, I, this game had the same chance of curse the raven's cry of getting reviews There's no way in hell we're paying that price for it because oh yeah unless we get keys <laughs> no. which, 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 which is really sad because i actually wanted to play it i i've said it before i really liked luguru i liked the combat in there i, I, and if this, I enjoyed it the original and, and if, if if this is if this is uh if this is just like that but more refined then this seems like something that's right up my alley but goddamn that price tag and goddamn, guys, just give us some keys. We're, we're going to give it a fair review. It's not like we're going to shit on it it's for no reason. It's going to be fair, and contrary to popular belief, we don't actually enjoy shitting How on about games. No. How about don't give us no fucking keys for it? And <laughs> uh, the Neo Dodge Bullet gift, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's say, uh, 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 Jordan, let's I, 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 I will buy you a copy for one of your Jew holidays. Are you going to buy it for me in eight parts? Is that how that works? <laughs> I, I will give you the money in um, eight installments. Yeah, yeah just, just mail me like severed rabbit parts until I can assemble my own rabbit. Exactly. 
seems le- seems legit. All right. Um, but you guys, you guys play some games on uh, on Tuesdays, and that's oh, getting yes, an update. Um, yes, a uh, very specific one lately, which is Dying Light. And yeah, the game's been out for about two years, and I didn't really expect it to see any more updates. But hey, Hajanik from uh, Techland dropped the Dying Light content drop number one, Lethal Inventions. And it introduces the three weapons that you can see on that screenshot right there. Uh, (laughs) Which is, I'm guessing that's a battle axe, a pocket knife, and a revolver. That's a thing. (laughs) So, so oh, each listen, of these man. weapons has like abilities attached to them, right? Like yeah, with the, with the, the revolver, like if you get a bunch of headshots, the sixth one is free yeah. or something. Yeah, the the weapons all have uh, each of the weapons in Dying Light all have like different attributes, and they have different attack animations. They consume different amounts of stamina, but they all have one thing in common, which is they break after you use them like three or four times. Uh, I'm not kidding. That is literally the biggest complaint that people had when the game first came out, outside of the performance being generally crap, was that the weapons broke fairly quickly. Also, um, I think we're on part six, or yeah, definitely, we'll be coming up in part seven. This is what yeah. I've learned about playing the game. We want to thank our theorem for picking that copy up, because this was another game. Was like, I, I had already re- I bought it once. Let's just put it like that. Most people <laughs> the, the, in the store. This was our beta test for the Steam refund policy. <laughs> it was mine. Um, but the one thing I've learned about the game is just you, once you get guns, fuck all this weapon building nonsense. Because <laughs> then it's, the game starts shitting bullets and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are. There's suddenly a whole lot more like raiders or goons just going around town with well, well that's, so, the, that's hey, the whole thing, man. Now that I, and it's not just like a gun. Once you get the first gun, and then you I have like five or six guns. The only time I break out something that I crafted earlier is for people's entertainment at home, so they can see a little more gore than just your standard first-person zombie shooter. Mm-hmm. But no, and I, it's uh, yeah. I, I for one am still glad to see that they're still actively maintaining dying light and putting out new stuff, even if it's just like three new weapons, Mm -hmm. but that's good. That means that they still care. And along with the weapons, they did fix a couple of bugs here and there. Uh, Nothing too spectacular that I noticed on Linux. The uh, slight desync issues that happen in multiplayer are still very much there. So, eh. (laughs) Why don't you use that technology tech land and go back and fix Dying Light Remastered? Because we no joke spent almost an entire full hour trying to get into a multiplayer game. Yeah. Well, th- and, th- yeah. and that was the thing too, is that like the 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 OG uh, uh, Dead Is Land um, that actually works for network multiplayer for uh, the mm-hmm. remastered. It just doesn't, which is mm-hmm. you know awful, 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 awful. But Pedro, you're you're a limey. Why don't why don't you tell us about Scurvy? <laughs> uh, sort of. Uh, well, this is the pirate colon plague of the dead. So the pirate colon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, man. So don't you remember the Lemmy title. Wings level? That's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we are title, definitely, but it's free to play, which was the only reason I even bothered to install it. And then I got to the menu and I tried to click the options menu and it didn't register my mouse clicks. So I said, you know what? I'm out. Uh, but apparently I'm in the minority because if you look at the Steam reviews, they're basically positive or overly positive or overwhelmingly positive, however. What, 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 what does the graph say, though? Hmm? Yeah, uh, if you, I honestly didn't have a look at the histogram graph, but yeah, it's free to play. It's uh, supposedly like a naval combat game, possibly in the same vein that um, Windward did it, which was why I was curious about it, because I really liked Windward, and if it had, like, a third-person perspective instead of the isometric you, you, one. You gotta love the mental juggernaut who threw up the um, number one top not recommended review. <laughs> Extremely gay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a bunch of men on a ship for extended periods of time, and they thought women were bad luck. What do you expect is gonna happen? Extremely fabulous. Exactly. Exactly. Why do you why do you think they're like always walking around with those scarves and the bandanas and I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, hate mail um, can be sent to Jordan <laughs> at LinuxGameGas.com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Submit that relationship advice, people. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, but but yeah. I, I mean, like, I'm not that big into sailing simulators, open word or no, but you can release the Kraken in this, apparently. 
It's not an euphemism, but I'm into it. <laughs> it, it it's it's free to try. The only thing it's going to cost you is a little bit of electricity and some bandwidth. So, yeah, uh, it's like a one gig download. So it's not even particularly breaking the bank. Then it's there. It, it's the whole you know free to play community. So you, you know what that entails. So yeah, yeah prepare your colon. Um, uh, your pirate colon. Yeah. So sp- speaking, speaking of deep, dark places where no one wants to go, uh, dungeons three. Um, this is uh, sort of a dungeon keeper style game where you can build your dungeon so that you can set up a death trap for intrepid heroes who are trying to steal all your money and ruin your dastardly plots. But this one has a little twist to it. You can actually go outside the dungeon and there's like a real time strategy type thing that I don't really care about. And I'm not, that's the thing. I, I would be interested in playing this if the RTS portion was optional and if you could just like set up your dungeon, and watch like your humans go through the meat grinder and get murdered to death. I will say though that this this game is a nice surprise insofar as they give you some actual freaking system requirements. Like holy that is shit, very peculiar. In a, in a very peculiar no, they're they're, 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 com- they're comprehensive. They, they really are. They, they give you, like, the patch level of Ubuntu. They tell you SteamOS. They give you a number <laughs> of processors that you can try out. Um, a dedicated uh, AMD NVIDIA card. They give you... Um, uh, the, okay, so I, I will. I did not notice that they require DirectX 11 on Linux. That's going to be a bit. <laughs> that's going to be a bit of a problem. But they they yeah, do have a nice little thing. Says, as I said. <laughs> yeah. Um. Other other, other Linux distributions, Mint, etc., which are all Ubuntu based, might work, but they can't give them official support. Honestly, I, I I'm even with the DX 11 thing. I'm happy that they even went so far as to do this. Right. No, this like, is the right way to do it. What do you have? Exactly. You, you have your OS, something we've been screaming about all along. You have 1604.3 LTS. All right, you're going to base something on it and you're not going to do SteamOS? Base it on that because it's not that much of a moving target. But on top of that, bonus soda, SteamOS, which also, well, you need to get that shit out of beta, seriously. Um, that's the way to do it. And anyone else is like, well, it doesn't work with Hannah Montana Linux. They can say, well, it might work. And you know what? If it doesn't uh, get stuffed. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, not, not providing official support is perfectly fine. As long as, as, as long as you can prove that it's not like really distribution specific. If there's, you can point towards like a specific driver bug or whatever, but dungeons three, it's out. It's probably going to go on sale for the holiday sale. Um, it's, uh, it's a little pricey. They have it listed here as like 45 euros. 39 bucks. So, yeah, it's wow. not cheap. And fuck Dungeons 2 wasn't pricing. cheap back in the day. It's a... Uh, I didn't hate um, uh, Dungeon Keeper back in the day when I played it, but that was back in the day where I didn't know a whole lot of games, so maybe my visions, uh, the nostalgia, pink-tinted glasses, whatever you want to call them, I... Uh, I don't know, man. I look at it and... <laughs> It falls in the category of I'm not really interested, but I'd try it because you never know. It might be the one that makes you interested in that genre. So good, be, yep. yes, yeah. Uh, um, be, be a dungeon creeper. Two weeks ago, we, we talked about some Shogun Samurai, a surprisingly well done JRPG mm-hmm. on Linux, but it had a major issue, and they said they were going to patch it. Well, a couple of issues, and Pedro, it look, looks like they've kind of gotten around to fixing up old Goku. Uh, yeah, well, uh, they claim that they fixed it, because if you scroll down to the performance improvements on the uh, new announcement for Goken, they say stuttering issues. We've made several approaches to the stuttering issue, and we've optimized Goken further. We aren't experiencing any stutters or lags on our end, so you were when you put it out and you didn't fix it right. Uh, so the way that they actually do give you descriptions with everything they fix, they give you a little bit of an overview of what they did to change it. And so they say that they changed how the camera worked and uh, they basically tried to optimize as objects get rendered as you move around. They tried to optimize that to have as minimal impact on the frame timing as possible. But I did give it a go Mm -hmm. and it did fix some of the stuttering for me. But as soon as you move to a place that you've never been to before, it's there. It's noticeable. It's come on, guys. Oh, man, it's there and it's there with spades. I saw when you put that in the show notes. 
yeah, I'm going to have a go with this. And because this is a really fun game hiding behind a really, really shit stuttering issue that I, I, I've been on Linux. So like VSync screen tearing doesn't bother me because I've had to deal with it for decades on Linux. It's like even watching videos doesn't, but that jitter was enough to just, okay, we're just going to put, put the brakes on this one and I'll come back to it. Uh, apparently it's allergic to leprechauns though because it completely borked on it <laughs> oh yeah it, it did and <laughs> I, I didn't have that issue on the ryzen 7 same monitor that you and empty both have our uhd uh monitors no problem whatsoever except it didn't do jack fuck and or all for the um frame stuttering i mean if there was a decrease there was and they did mention that they increased loading on ssds and hdds I couldn't tell. I mean, I'm not saying it was slow on the SSD. I didn't put it on the NVMe <laughs> no, but drive. You can but... still see the loading times, and maybe I'm paying more attention to the loading times now that you mention it. But yeah, no, they're not particularly fast loading times. Yeah, I mean, it's not a graphical, it's not graphic intensity or anything. There, there's something deeply broken way deep down in that pirate booty of this game. I don't know how they're doing like their rendering because it's an isometric view. You can probably get away with not having everything. This, this thing rendered. probably runs swimmingly on Intel integrated graphics, man. I think even it was like it's no, they did say that in their forum. They're like, this is yeah, bizarre. It, it runs better on lower respect hardware than, you know, you have a 1080. I have a 980 and we both have Ryzen's. And you were playing it. I mean, it's a known issue, but and it's not fixed. So I don't know why they said it was fixed. That's the only complaint. I wish they would fix it mm -hmm. because it is a has no business being as well done as it is. Extremely well paced. I'm kind of interested in the story, and I hope I don't forget about it before they get this sorted. Yeah. What's up next, Jordan? Uh, up next is uh, City Skylines, a game that my roommate has been playing because I've seen him go on Steam and playing around with this. This is the Green Cities um, patch. So they basically uh, give you um, they give you a, oh an IT office so you can have little IT drones wandering around. Um, but the the main the main thing with this uh, I guess patch DLC whatever you, whatever you want to call it is it adds a bunch of green technology. So if you want to grow drugs, I mean, be more environmentally friendly, you can do that within your game. Um, they, they add some uh, new concert, unique buildings. Um, they, they add I'm four new polices. You. Like, Ow. It, it, you, go fuck it. Um, again, plate glass, <laughs> not, 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 not a lot to give to that um, on the knuckles. If they added some like GTA, like, like Sim Drug Lord to this, I'd start playing it. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if you're into the SimCity city planning games, this was this was City Skylines was sort of the game that everyone was singing the praises of because the last Sim Cities was kind of a turd and had some mm -hmm. like really badly implemented online only DRM that you could get around by editing a config file because oh, yeah, it's people literally figured it out on the first day. <laughs> yeah, and, and but so the, this if you if you're into City Sims, this is the way to do it. They give dude, you a bunch of dude. content. These guys these guys have been pretty good about this too. Hey, Canadian, you, it's seven forty nine right now seventy five percent off Ooh, that that's good so if you like uh, city building games definitely pick this up uh and that's that's about it that's all that's all i have to say about this game well the um green cities is 12.99 so <laughs> yeah the dlc is more expensive than the game right now that, that's uh <laughs> definitely a thing you gotta work out i think uh <laughs> foxy threw this in our show notes because uh if you're a patron at a certain level you can suggest stuff during the week as we're working on them i know he's really into this this is like civilization for me i remember playing like SimCity 2000 or whatever on the mac and because we had that at some i think secondary and you either dig this stuff or you don't i fall in the don't i, I i'd rather play in traffic than before <laughs> so, at least playing in traffic is fun it gets your adrenaline going it would keep it would hold my hold my yeah. attention longer um <laughs> but i do believe they've fixed all the issues with uh not all but performance it's very workable these days because when this thing released on linux it ran like dog shit yeah I mean, and uh we actually have mir uh, in discord which absolutely loves this game uh, it's one of the games he likes to play around with and for me, really, the only thing out of the patch notes that kind of struck me was the they fixed the localization issues, because if you were playing the game in, say, Portuguese, 
uh, certain text boxes would be cropped and you can see entire chunks of text. That was bad. Why was this an issue for this long and you've only fixed it now? Oh, dude, you, you should um, uh, see what happens in Caledonia. <laughs> oh. oh, snap. All right. All right. Uh, my, my, my modem's done doing a hiccup, so I guess... Co- Coming up next, uh, we talk about Bitcoin mining and uh, how to get your ass banned from Steam real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you lot keep making this show and that Wednesday show what we do and those two weekly streams where we just play video games possible. You are amazing. How can you say maybe throw a dime at our heads? Wait, 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 what are you talking about? Uh, People are supporting the show to prevent us from doing three streams a week of us playing video games. It's called, (laughs) it's a preventative measure. People are also giving us money so that we uh, can't actually do anything else productive during the week. We have to constantly commit time to this. Yeah, but if you want to be one of those people who are perpetually ruining our lives, you can head on over to uh, LinuxGameCast.com. Click the support button. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got a wish list. We got uh, we got a Newegg affiliate link. That's working. So if you want to buy some stuff off Newegg, fund, the, uh, fund some fighting against patent trolls and give us some cash. That is definitely a thing you can do. You got some PayPal domain buttons you can click on to give us a one-time donation through that, or give us some uh, Bitcoin, shitcoin, Dogecoin, whatever the hell Bitcoin, you want. Bitcoin, man, it. Bitcoin tanked, man. Get rid of it. Just yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop, yeah, stop it's, buying it's, video cards, you guys. But, but we need some of that. Right. Uh, do, do keep in mind, though. I mean, we will actually spend it. We're not hoarding it for you. Oh, yeah. abs- abs- absolutely. And of course, you can always head on over to Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. 190 of you are giving us. A good amount of money. We got uh, we got two hundred and twenty bucks, thirty bucks away from that uh, merch run. Uh, we got we got to give yeah. special extra thanks to one of the extra cool, sexy people of that boy, right, Bobby. Bobby D is now our new latest executive producer. He's in the Discord chat. Uh, he has access to the executive producer area, and you too can get access to the Discord by joining our Patreon. You get a number of other cool, wacky shit, like a custom form title and chat realm. Uh, if we get that converted over to vanilla, we got, um, we got a lot of Patreon only content. You get early access to our, uh, let's plays and streams. That's pretty cool. Sometimes we have a Patreon exclusive stream, so maybe you get some special stuff. Got a Doctor Who Game of Thrones podcast that is available. That's mostly just Doctor Who. It's really, really Hey, man, good I got stuff. an idea. I think uh, something that we need to do, um, because Discovery is going to take a Christmas break, you know, a fall break. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you, want, you want to do Linux Discovery Cast? I think we get everyone in that wants to be in for the patrons and we'll do a video um, group chat and we'll put that out as a podcast. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down for yeah, that. Just, just, just going to rock, rock and roll with that, man. It'll definitely be a thing. Um, oh, Frank. Jesus, man. I... <laughs> oh, yes. Frank is holding a very special list. It's a total eclipse of the Ven, man. It's like, boom, you, you see that? <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, if I lean back, t- t- tell them about Frank's fine upstanding cannibal wool. Yeah, we, we got we got some hardware donations. Occasionally, some people uh, want to toss us some stuff off the Amazon wish list. And so uh, they get to go up. Uh, they, we consider them fine upstanding cannibals. There are uh, fuck buddies, and they get to go up on the fuck wall. Uh, we got a bunch of people whose names I can't read because I get really crappy video from the return video. Yes. Bradley, Jill and Steve, Maddie. Maddie's with the power supply. I remember that because I call it the Mad High Power Supply. Michael G, I believe, picked up the memory. Erod 20, John M, Mr. Red, Linux Nero picked up the fan. Steve O, NVMe Drive, he is currently with Shot right now. Clockia, Motherboard uh, from Space Australia. The Admiral JT, dude, I'm blanking on that. Truggy. The pink chair currently, and these are just studio upgrades where we can bring you better and more bizarre bullshit, and you will always permanently be displayed in any incarnation. I'm surprised somebody hasn't like, hey, man, that's a good marketing thing. Maybe I'll put you you can listen. We're whores. You, you, yeah. put, you, you yeah, can put your web you zone us, on Frank's uh, wall. We, will talk we don't about care. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, you, if you if you if you want to if you want to steal some uh, precious money away from those Bitcoin miners, uh, uh, you can't. Well, well, we'll actually talk about that a bit in the news segment. But then mm-hmm. October is the spookiest month, and so we we want to be spooked. Oh shit, son, it's too spooky for you. Speaking of patrons, we love you so much. We want to give you something back. Uh, we we just uh, kind of made sweet sweet love yet again. 
with the fine, fine people at Aspire. And w- not that we ever had any issues, but it's like w- we officially, you know, we made we put a ring on it, you know, our relationship. So it turns out that layers of fear, we, we have three extra keys all of a sudden because we oh, yes. kind of already picked that up. And we want to give it back to you since you are supporting us. And, you know, maybe you want the booga booga screechy school scary game. Or may- maybe you just want to give it to like a niece or a nephew and just terrorize them because you don't like your uh, siblings. Yeah, you, need, you need that jack in the box from the, from right. the Wednesday show. So what we're thinking is, let's face it, we don't want you to do a big anything. We, we like to keep it dead simple. When this show goes live, if you're listening to it right now, that means this is posted on our Patreon page. Leave a comment under the post, and all you have to do is tell us your best, or however you want to say it, worst horror story involving Microshaft Windows. The three best or worst will receive a key for Layers of Fear next week. Guaranteed because motherfucker, we're all like the Lannisters. We keep our word on that shit. And nobody ever came back. You can say I, we're I, horrible, I you, you can say we're stupid, but one. you can't say we've ever squelched on a bet. Oh no, so, no. So, make so, no some, mistake. Something, we something are similar, assholes, man. but we're honest assholes. Right. Uh, we're, we're, we do what we say on the tin. Hmm? Yep. Hey, sure. man, since uh, we're done with all the horrible, horrible shilling, but thanks, everyone. Again, we, it's, that's better than doing commercials. We at least get to ass around and thank you for being awesome. Uh, we, I know somebody's complaining about that, but even better, we're going to follow that up with hardware shit. Oh, yes. Uh, we're yeah. just going to hit all the note buttons. So uh, we've been talking over the past couple of weeks that there has been some rumors going around about the GTX 1070 Ti. And the fine folks at PC Per have gathered the list of the tech ARP, uh, tech ARP, whatever you want to call them. Um, All the details that they got, uh, they compiled into one teeny tiny list uh, in a very concise post. Thanks for that, Jeremy Hellstrom, because I'm not looking at the tech arp website that no uh so yeah they basically have a list and you can see that the it's got the 1070 on the bottom it's got the 1070 ti in between uh the 1070 and the 1080 and it it claims to have uh 24 32 gpu cores that's cuda cores the gpu clock is going to be 1607 and 1683 with a turbo the texture fill rate is 244 to 255. It uses 8 gigabytes of DDDR5, which has a memory bandwidth of 256 gigabytes per second, similar to the 1070, while the 1080 has 320 gigabytes per second. Now, I'm going to say this right now. This is going to be GDDR5, like the 1070, which means... Good luck finding that card because the moment the uh, coin miners get a hold of hey, these, man, they're listen, going to be sold out everywhere. R5X, so it's slightly less appealing. Yeah, GDDR5X has a lower latency to access the memory, mm-hmm. which means that the whatever the hashing algorithm is for coin mining, it can't really do it all that well for some reason. So GDDR5 is actually the better memory system for coin mining so, so you want you want to you want to snipe this card before all the miners do and because yeah. they just sit around and mine bitcoin all day there you you're, you're not going to be able to do this i'm still holding my goddamn breath for the 1380 or the 3080 or the whatever whatever the hell they're calling I, uh, it. I, I completely agree with you because we both uh paid the price and bought 980s and went and found a corner and rocked silently for about a week after spending 500 fucking dollars. <laughs> At least dollars you didn't get card. stuck with three and a half gigs of memory, okay? It says, yeah. it says, yeah. it says yeah. a guy who's got a free 1080. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Martin. Appreciate it. <laughs> here's the thing, though. Here's what I want to think. Because I, I saw uh, Steve and everyone else in chat realm talking like, why why would nvidia release this was it, they, they said you know maybe just a blank spot on their um spreadsheet you know same reason intel flipped the fucking power because they can mm-hmm. that very valid theory however gentlemen ladies boys and girls i have, I have an alternate theory that I, I would like to run by you 
to entertain, if you would. Why, why okay. not? We got time to kill. All right. NVIDIA made this to stockpile the ever-loving living shit out of these. They have an inexhaustible supply that they're going to sell at a markup that the miners can rush it. And they're like, fuck, we'll send you another dump truck load of them. And that's good for the bottom line. They make a card. They don't say, hey, look, it's the mining edition. But they're like, hey, look, this thing mines better than the 1080 is going to. And it can be cheaper. Yeah, and I'm kind of will. Uh, I'm kind of sort of tempted to agree because I've also heard the rumor that the 1070 Ti chips are basically the 1080 Ti chips that didn't particularly bin all that well. Mm. So they're going to clock them down, disable a few of the ROPs, disable a few of the cores, disable a few of the memory units, uh, or you know, just instead of using GDR5X, they use GDR5 and call it a 1070 Ti. So yeah, it's, it, it, it definitely <laughs> seems legit. Um, there, there, there is a huge market now for just mining cards, and it, it's really making making being a PC gamer kind of difficult these days. It is. I mean, so, then again, I mean, you're probably in the top five percent if you're even looking for a video card that starts with ten. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, unless I mean, you're, unless you're let's, looking let's, at let's the ten fifty and the ten fifty and the ten fifty Ti. Are really yeah. really good. Uh, are really good consumer cards. They're really so. good if you can get them for if you can get them for MSRP. Now, like personally, I could never justify buying a 1080. Yeah, I know. You're like, shut up, man. It stoats on your wish list. That's because I will mock somebody weekly for an entire year for being fiscally irresponsible and they <laughs> buy it. I just wanted to keep I track of be. price. <laughs> Twice but even. Yeah, no. Twice. I have no. Be. But here's the thing. To finish the sentence is. I'll be I'll be FSM damned like the today is like 500 no 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 if the, this comes in like 450 470 that that guy gets other than like we kind of wants it. <laughs> it it wakes yeah. that motherfucker up and that motherfucker will pound on me for like 4 5 months before it's either buy the buy it or go play in traffic to stop <laughs> The voices, you know, or 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 both, but it, it is get, slightly and then I cheaper get, then than the 1080 gets it because I'm in the will. Oh yeah, <laughs> the 1080 uh, right now has an MSRP of 500 bucks, and this one, according to the speculation, uh, will probably have an MSRP of 430 bucks. So it is slightly cheaper, and it fa- fits very much into that same market uh, space that AMD has sort of addressed, but then left because of all the coin mining, which was where the Vega 56 was supposed to go. Uh, Of course, now with the mining, the the Vega 56 is sold out everywhere, and you can't buy it for even secondhand for less than 500 bucks. So, yeah, NVIDIA is just saying, oh, you guys were vying for this spot? Okay, we got it. Well, there is that. That's a very valid alternate theory is... The Vega kind of, sort of, on an alternate Wednesday after 3 p.m. in that one game at that one resolution was like two frames a second faster than the existing uh, 1070. And NVIDIA is like, bitch, just dropping this because they can't. But uh, humble, humble, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's a humble. Uh, sorry about Hitler bundle uh, all the way from Australia down under. Yeah, it, it's it's actually kind of worthwhile. There's some there's a lot of Linux games here. You got, no, you got Screen Sheet, yeah. Hand of Fate, Satellite Rain, Firetop Mountain, Hackernet, and the other Hackernet, and Crawl. <laughs> the only one here, and Armello, if you feel like paying uh, twelve bucks. Uh, there's only only Hurt World, which I don't really care about, um, has uh, has no Linux version. But here's the thing about Crawl: I want that to have network multiplayer because that would be like ridiculous after show bait. Yeah, oh, man. that would actually be a really good after show game, but it's not. It's local only, no, and that kind of yeah. sucks. And for this model, the only game I don't really have that I care about, because I don't care about the Hacknet games, uh, it's Armello. But 12 bucks for Armello? Eh, you, you, you just got to bug Foxy enough and promise that you'll play it with him. <laughs> I, st- I, still owe, I still owe you that game, Foxy. Let me know when you want to do that on a stream, and we'll do that. That's a, uh, yeah, it is a good bundle. There's a lot of Linux support in there, but I exact same problem that you had, J-Baby. It's like, I already own all these, except 
But that last one that I watched the trailer, I was like, oh, it doesn't, to me personally, doesn't, doesn't hit me with that $12. Now, here's the thing, though. If, if that was, um, that $12 game was, uh, what is it, Overgrowth? I, I would have gave him 12 bucks. Just Yeah. No, <laughs> that, I, I, it, it's yeah. from Wolfire. They're, they're not going to put that shit on sale. They got to justify years in early access. And then they uh, put uh, they put it on sale at the $15 mark at one point on one bundle that mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah. But it, it was the one. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, we, 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 we talked a bit about Aspire. Uh, they published another game recently. Tell them about yes, it, Yes, they did. Yeah, man. One which was supposed to have released for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux at the exact same time. But we all know how that song and dance goes. So the Windows version came out and Mac and Linux got to basically Well, well sell the Linux version kind of came out, but they were having problems <laughs> with it and then it didn't come out. Yeah, it came back uh, in, so, so to say. Uh, we all got an email earlier in the week that said, "At the year is 2084, you are Daniel Lazarski, an elite neural detective known as the Observer, whose purpose is to hack and invade uh, suspects' minds." So yeah, you're basically trying to solve crimes by literally going into the suspect's mind and seeing what they saw, learning what they can. But those people have dark past so there's a little bit of spoopy stuff happening as you do it i personally i love horror games i devour horror games one of my all-time favorite games was silent hill 2 uh and until amnesia the dark descent came out i was kind of itching for another proper horror game but hey if uh the fine folks that also made layers of fear can actually make i can't remember their name right now but they're being published by aspire so that's good yeah, aspire's doing um, the publishing thing that's definitely a thing uh if it's gonna be layers of fear it's the same people so there's gonna be a lot of doors in it um, and there's going to uh, if there's not a point where a doll comes running out of a door and smack face you first into his covered on the other side of the hallway <laughs> you know i mean yeah, i'm not huge on the, like super spooky horror games that's one of the main reasons i've yet to play hoonie pop but um this 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 just going by the screenshots motherfucker if this thing plays as good as it looks yeah maybe maybe. i I mean the the only observer i care about is he he keeps his brain in a dish no no whatever well there Uh, is that bit in observer uh, well, or there was at one point where you could actually, in the promo, you could see your brain, one of the promo trailers they put out, mm-hmm. a oh, brain, shit. your brain supposedly in a, like, a thing. He just, he and energizer bunny, man. He's a right, right, right. One thing we should point out, I don't know if they've announced this, but they didn't say don't announce this. They said it's coming out. When's it coming? It's coming out on the 24th. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, it is uh, in that very page right there. So yeah, no, uh, it okay. is. Uh, that is what they're saying. It will be coming out on the twenty fourth. So that's let's see, the twenty fourth. That's next week. We're doing observer next Tuesday. week. Tuesday. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah. Tuesday. Right. That could totally be a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of scanning people, uh, we kind of talked about this a while ago, back in uh, episode one sixty two. I, I, I saw th- there was a edit in the show notes wait, wait, from wait, that wait. episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm glad that's what that was because like, who was digging around an episode <laughs> once? Because in our Google Docs, it shows you why mm-hmm. mine's by la. It's like what the yeah, hell? Don't going hit on the spacebar, Jordan. Uh, Come on. And the, the more entertaining thing is, I was afraid to ask. It's like you know what? I don't yeah. even want to know. I don't, yeah, because we, we, we had talked about a related project. I, had, I actually had to go back and check. No, but this is scan mem. This is a little utility that lets you, well, scan your application's memory so you can poke around and see what you're doing. Um, so it's handy if you're going to write hacks or if you're fuzzing and you're looking for ways to fuck with games, to cheat, or if maybe you're looking for exploits or something in-game that you can use to increase your speed run. So they have a new version out. This is tag not .17. And uh, the main thing here is they got a bit of a performance boost, anywhere from ten to forty percent for certain operations. And they've also split out the um, they split out the UI and uh, actual backend code, so you can use it as a library. Uh, and and it, you can not install the GUI if you're so inclined. So this was used in that utility that um, his 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 pretty face is on the contributor list, and I spacing on it right now. Um, 
he uh, works for something or other, uh, doing kernel engineering for SCSI something or other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man, I'm 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 entirely. It was a long it. time ago. He, he got in contact Sebastian, with us. Yes, yeah. so, so, yes, so, so Sebastian something or other. Yeah, so he, he was working on the utility for um, messing around with Steam games, which he said you should not use because you will get your ass, your your account back. <laughs> Same thing here. Well, but, you know, you, if you're, if you're, you're kind of misremembering that, I made a point of saying, do not fucking use this with Steam because they will nope you from orbit. And he wrote us back going, yeah, I really should ob- obfuscate this from Steam. Yeah, I should be hiding that, shouldn't right. I? Huh. <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 don't really have an update on that. But Moral of the story, uh, kids, the, the, uh, don't don't use this shit with Steam. Uh, another thing, yeah. did you look on the GitHub main page? There's a GUI for this too. What is this? this is a, what kids call trainers. It's what we called game sharks back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's it's, it's, for, it's for building trainers. Is what they call it. It's what? Yeah, it's for it's for building trainers. It's not necessarily a trainer. Yeah, it has the memory scanning abilities that you need for building a trainer for a specific game or one that's general purpose enough that it will work with basically anything that it can detect, which was what Sebastian was doing. And well, yeah, no, they oh, have... Uh, I, I, actually, there's, there's another interesting use for this. If you're doing a source port, say if you're running Open Morrowind or something, you can actually look actually at how the getting game... getting all the calls. Yeah, and... yeah un, un, interpreting the calls, understanding how the game manipulates objects in memory and using that to improve your product. Legitimate use case will get you ass get your ass banned on Steam. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, As for reverse engineering, it's always going to be flaky. Spe- speaking speaking of source ports, OpenRA has a new version. Um, this is released on the fourteenth, um, or this will be released on the fourteenth. Is it? Yeah, fourteenth. It's the twentieth right now. God damn it! Calendars, brain, time zones. So the uh, the big change here is there's no longer a launcher app. Um, you have for the whatever mod you want to run, you have individual launchers now for Tiberian Sun, Red Alert, and Dune 2000, which is useful if you just want to play Dune 2000. Uh, they also have um, a new command bar to make uh, queuing commands on units a little easier. It's uh, they have LAN auto discovery, which is a nice touch if you're going to be setting up LAN parties for Dune 2000, and community driven balance improvements for Red Alert and Tiberian Dawn, which always always makes me go hmm. Because as, as we talked about with Team Fortress, communities have a very interesting view on what balance actually is. But again, these, these guys are nuts. They could maybe use something like scan them to improve their um, the conformance to uh, the old Command and Conquer games. But again, it, it, it's, it's a source port. It's great. You can play these games, which are really, really old. They can barely run on Windows now natively on Linux. It's good. Yeah. And it's, well, it's open red alert if you're really into that type of game. Yeah, these are some people like the nostalgia. It's good that you're still able to play these old games and you don't have to rely rely on wine. So, or DOSBox or anything like that. This was like never my thing, but good work on that. Now. Speaking of something that will straight up get your ass banned. Ooh, ooh yes. <laughs> so this, this, this is this is Wowzer, no related to uh, Bowser or some old Tex Avery cartoon. It's uh, a World of Warcraft client done in uh, HTML5 and WebGL, which is really really cool. So this is primarily for use in private servers because if you try to connect to the actual uh, battle net with this, you will get your account banned. Yay! Thanks, what? Blizzard. <laughs> I, I actually we're, we're we're waiting for the incoming cease and desist from Activision in three, two, one. No, uh, it is a neat project though. Um, so far, they're only supporting up to the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Um, perfor- War- performance has wise, changed I- since the last time I've seen it. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not sure performance wise if this is good enough to actually use in say a raid or something like that. Uh, but for side quests or just derping around, hey, it's it's a native. Uh, wow client yes it's web native but that still counts i'm gonna say it does hmm. well it's not official even if it's native well i mean we were never gonna get an official client anyways so oh, hell no um i just thought this was kind of neat work and just i want to let more people know about it because i feel that we would be doing our part to get this up and well it's already up and running i mean this is basically hey look Technically, this is kind of possible, and that, that's wicked cool. But in anything that helps uh, curb stomp productivity, I'm all for. 
Um, <laughs> and it works on the browser, so you could just control tab out of that tab. <laughs> exactly. Wow, on a browser, it would be almost like you could play Quake in a browser. Wait, we used to be able to do that on Linux. Fuck you, <laughs> Ed. Um, uh, well, I mean, well, you can still play you Unreal Browser. Tournament 3 in a browser. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> That's true. That's also a thing. Uh, do we have anything else? Uh, yes, yeah, we just do. Just one was, uh, last teeny tiny bit, which uh, yeah. someone found an exploit on SDL 2.0.5. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's on the it's on the uh, NVD site. So the this it's worthwhile enough that the government has decided that hey, if you're going to be using this, you should you should patch it. Um, uh, uh, I, 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 Ikibutz posted this on Twitter. I'm like, huh, mm -hmm. that's a little that's a little neat. But basically, you can there's an integer overflow uh, vulnerability when you're creating an RGB surface in the newer version of SDL 2.0.5. So uh, it's exploitable. You should. Uh, Get it patched out and fixed. That's that's really it. I I just thought it was neat that we're getting um we're getting vulnerabilities in game dev tools now, and it's actually a little scary, spooky. Um, hmm. yeah. Uh, so this is a the vulnerability is in SDL or Vulcan? Uh, in SDL. SDL. SDL two point zero point five specifically. Uh, and uh, Aculus has already said, oh yeah, no, two point zero point seven is coming out shortly. To address a certain specific exploit, mm. but yeah, it is very prone to buffer overflows. So yeah, that needs kind of sort of needs a fix, especially mm. since all of the feral ports are using SDL. Listen, fer ferals, you, 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 <laughs> you heard it, Unity. Uh, just go ahead and drop SDL support. Just go back to that uh, spaghetti nightmare mess of input handling that you used to have. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little in the review segment coming up next. Um, All right. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's basically it. We're we're gonna we're gonna beat the game accidentally. Are you prepared to beat beat the game? The game. This is well. I I, I wasn't, and I'm pretty sure Pedro wasn't, but we did it anyways. This is a chair position for Beat the Game by Worm Animation done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about five pounds, ten bucks. What is it? Beat the Game is an adventure game where you find your way with sounds. Sounds you, in you find introduce cinematic cutscenes as the story unfolds. You can create new combinations on your holographic music mixer throughout the game. In the end, you perform a live show with the sounds you find. So... Don't know what the chairquisition is. This is where we take a look at some games. Uh, in this case, sometimes the developer sends it to us. This is one of those times they send us some keys. Good on them. Where we give it a once over, give it some uh, QA that maybe they uh, didn't do in the first place and give you our final thoughts to let you know if well, you should yeah, buy the game. This is true. I mean, ultimately, you're aiming for a passing grade, which is is two, two, two chairs. Yeah, if you, if you if you get 50%, you pass. Most games do. Uh, one chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means it's just squeaks by three chairs means that's pretty good four chairs means that's awesome and we got our categories oh doom mixed with the working shiny sounds controls and fun so then beat the game did it work i don't know man uh did it work for you over here it sure did on the ryzen 1700 uh overclocked just a little bit at 3.6 i tested it with the 980 at 1080 solid 60 with everything uh, on beautiful because hey unity scream of nope haven't seen that in a while but goddamn it's back like scoliosis um and it's rocking a stable-ish 30 at 3840 by 2160 but it's 2017 and if you throw in that old school old ass unity pop-up screen which means if i'm trying to play this on a steam machine or my own steam box fuck i gotta break out the keyboard and shit now unless i got my steam controller fuck you but outside of that, I I can give it a solid, like, passing three, man. What about you? Yeah, I mean, you, you immediately lose a chair if I see that stupid scream and a nope. It's 2017, guys. Come on. This, this isn't... This isn't um, Uni Unity is more than capable of having in-game configuration, so you should use that. Uh, but, beyond hey, man, that, don't, on don't, don't, uh, wait, 25... Wait, 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 wait. Don't you like it when you have the Unity screen and nope and in-game configuration? <laughs> and, oh, and, and this, this one also the Unity loop of nope. Yeah, it's... It, it's, it's uh, 
It's good times. Uh, I, I played this on the i7 6700HQ with the GTX 960M on Fedora 25. This is getting an upgrade to Fedora 27 when that drops. Uh, it performs reasonably well. I, lo- I kept it on medium and 720p just because I was afeard of... Unity scream of note usually means that there's still the Unity performance issues, mm. but it was averaging about 500 frames a second on the i7 with the, uh, with the 960M, so we'll give it three cheers. Yeah, no, you can totally keep the uh, V-Sync on for this one. You're not losing anything, and, well, there are issues with it, but that's later on. Uh, the big issue here really is the Unity Scream of Note, because, ah, come on, man! We've seen time and time again games actually running the Unity engine and making really good, really presentable, really configurable option screens they give you all the options that you can set be it controls graphics sounds whatever you can do it so please come on three chairs for me on the ryzen 5 1600 with the gtx 1080 on ubuntu mate 1604 all right so out of the box this thing's rocking straight with three 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 chairs yeah. yeah man uh shiny shiny and sounds how about that um i don't know i don't know the game is I'm not going to say it's ugly because it's definitely going for like an aesthetic choice here. It's kind of like if uh, if Psychonauts and the Blender Foundation had mm-hmm. had a baby. It does make really it, remind me it, of like a Blender movie. That it, 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 yeah. Um, the, the sounds are a little tricky because you can as you as you collect the noises, you can sort of make your own little funky soundtrack so you can pick what sort of resonates with you. And that's all right. But. Well, well, we'll get to that a little bit more in the fun segments. I'm going to give it two chairs, though, just because it's not... It's kind of... Fu- it, it is kind of fugly, to be perfectly honest. It, it, and it, Man, uh, I, I think, like, the cutscene, the intro scene kind of gives you a lot of hope, man. When you watch a that, lot. you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, so somebody's, somebody's done their fucking homework on this, man. I'm going to be able to rock this out. Then, I, here's the... It's funny that you bring up Blender, because, yeah, it does kind of look like Blender... And it kind of moves and controls like a fucking <laughs> Blender game. And by that, I mean janky as hell. I'm sorry, Blender. Uh, I thought you meant like an actual Blender where you press buttons. And well, then yeah, this, this is Blendtec, man. Um, no. Well, let's see. Let's see. It looks all right. But yeah, that. Uh, the music, if you want to call it that, because that's what this is all supposed to be about. The experience and story. Oh, fuck right off with this. The whole music concept of whatever you want to call this is like sampling and sequencing uh the the story and it's very th- this is about as in-depth as like uh what was it crisscross make a music video on the fucking sega oh, cd mi- mi- make right. my video they're, they're the ones with marky mark and the funky bunch too mm. <laughs> oh man that, that was a nightmare um, fuel ultimately once you fill up your soundboard which you'll do quickly Pedro, am I wrong when I'm saying this? Basically, all you're doing is generating new background music for distance. The game, yeah, pretty much. It's a, it does sound a lot like uh, it does sound a lot like distance. And yeah, no, uh, a little bit of spoilers. The last bit of the game is just a, a little concert that you get to pick the. Um, right sounds at the right time as the you, you, well, you, you, don't get to, you don't get to pick anything man but we'll, we'll <laughs> save that i'll save that for the fun section that yeah, okay, but so. it's uh i would actually be tempted to give this game three chairs for the shiny and sounds not because of the graphics because those are passable yes uh they show you i guess they convey what you need to see I well, guess. What, what the fuck what does it convey yeah that you have a character yeah got yes it. you have a character you can see your avatar in the world but that is yeah, basically but that, that's it. technically it works yes the sounds on the other hand i would make the argument that giving you the player the agency of actually setting your own background music to the game would be be a good thing no yeah, man listen, it, it, the, the entire background me, the entire background music for this thing all that sample bullshit sounds like you gave some weasels mescaline and like tiny little symbols and put them in a trash can and yes. kicked them down a hill yeah, hence the it, point it, 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 it definitely needs it more grind core it would be because besides being criminally short but we'll get to that uh this game also doesn't have a whole lot of variety and let's say if the game was longer 
maybe they could expand on that. Maybe they could give you more of that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, this totals out to two chairs for the shiny and the sounds. How about controls? I don't know, Pedro. What, what, what did you play this with? Wasp or... Well, um, I know. I played it with the keyboard and mouse because, oh, it's an adventure game. So let's, let's just use a keyboard and mouse and get it over with. Uh, no, it is... Uh, yeah, I guess you could play it with a controller if you really wanted to. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I tried. Um, I tried too, but, man. Yeah, the, 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 the problem therein is that it has the classic Unity for input handling. And so yeah. if you plug a controller in, especially the Steam controller, it just completely spazzes out. And at that point, I'm just like, whatever, I'm, I'm going to stick with Lost. Um, there's like a hot bar where you can click on things. There's some keyboard shortcuts, but um, mm-hmm. the, the one thing that really annoys me is usually middle click is move the camera and right click is interact. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. the it's the other way around. It's right click to control the camera and middle click to interact. The right that click was, didn't throw me off so much. That that was like my second go to though. But I, when you're talking about like the right click, that that camera movement when when you start getting to the far left right extremes, did you experience it? Just will glitch out the fuck you. Oh no, it, it's it's a, <laughs> it's a straight up lie, right? Like right. When, once you sort of hit the end of the wanderable area area, the camera locks in place. You can't really affect it. And then something will walk yeah. in front of your character and you're like, well, now I can't see anything. Um, but I mean, really, you're just wandering around and to like find the music samples, you either you either click on things or you go into listen mode and then you mm-hmm. just got to follow stuff around. But the, the, that's the, the, the key, really annoying the, bit about the listening oh, mode. I, I, is abso- absolutely. It, absolutely. Because all you freaking do is you have just have to follow it around slowly but surely. But if yeah. you move your mouse a little too much, no, you got to start over again. Just, yeah, it completely loses out. And the other annoying thing about listening mode is uh, because it's relying on the cursor. So let's say the cursor hits the far right of the screen. I got, I got a can't... prescription. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, you can't I keep going like to the right. So you though. actually have to go back to the left and twirl your character all the way around. That gets really annoying at one point, or it would get really annoying at one point if this game wasn't so criminally short. Um, yeah, a couple of things you can free move in this game, but save your time. It's not meant for it, even though it even shouldn't be an option because there are spots you genuinely just can't fucking get to until you mm-hmm. use the pathfinding, which is point and click. And holy fuck, a it's laughable as hell because dude will just like make weird lines and pattern. Like, are you trying to communicate with me, game? What should I do? Burn my sister? Uh, uh, and again, you get the ability, you get the illusion of moving the camera. Not that you're going to fucking need to. I think we'll touch that. So, gentlemen, um, the controls Here. technically work and you can unfuck your way around them, right? So yeah, you can it. actually finish the game, but that's yes. it. Uh, you, you, you can, you can kind of do that without trying, which we're going to talk about in the fun segment. Wait, wait, so, scissoring? <laughs> <don't> <laughs> <laughs> yes, two chairs. <laughs> or or peace or you know jog on or whatever the hell you call it in the UK. I I don't know. I'm not a Brit. Uh so fun. Yeah. So yeah, the game doesn't really tell you much about what you need to be doing. You kind of just wander around and eventually there's some text prompts that sort of indicate what you should be doing. And I so Pedro Pedro, you 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 sent that message um yesterday is like I think I accidentally beat the game. And I'm mm-hmm. like, "Huh." So, because uh, based on what I could tell, you just gotta find all the sounds. So, oh yeah, the, when he sent that, I was like, oh, I, I knew it was gonna be short. And I got back to the house the day, and I was like, I didn't know it was gonna be that short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, it was that short I, because it was completely accidental. It got to the point where, oh, okay, you have all the sounds. Go do the concert thing at night. Okay, I'll do the concert thing. Oh wait, that's it. What? Oh, yeah, no, the, the, the concert, too, is a real gem because it's just like a pattern matching game. If you could even call it that, <laughs> it, it's it's aimed at three year olds like the, the entire gameplay mechanism here is really stupid. And I get that they are trying to do something different. But the, the thing about doing an experimental game like this is experiments fail mm-hmm. all the time. And failure is an informative experience, but it's still not fun and it's not worth ten dollars. No, oh, I, I, I think it's kind of telling when you look at it, because there's a lot of items that you collect that don't do anything, which kind of leads me to believe that this was one of two things. Correct me if I'm right. One of two things it could be is a tech demo 
the type of thing that you take around to investors and be like, hey, you know, maybe we get some money for this and we'll do a Kickstarter to gauge interest and all that. And everyone went, yeah, mm -mm. no moss, <laughs> no moss on that. Or um, it could just, if I'm being like, kind of, could just be some artsy hipster bullshit, possibly. Or I, I guess like, it is a real thing. Like well, maybe it's a tutorial because well, that's, that's what this entire experience we're talking 51 fucking minutes i can nope through this game not having any idea what are you doing 47. It, it feels like I, you I, went through I, a tutorial I because i i ran out of like lsd and i had to find the one thing that lets you switch back to night mode because i was missing one sound but th that's the thing at the end though you get your little creepy pink friend jeep buddy comes and drives you away and then you get the to be continued and that's that's a bit of a fuck you because you mm -hmm. get uh, immediately after that exit game okay, yeah I'm, well listen man, you get to pay him 9.99 like, for the honor of getting fucked <laughs> no I, it was the point where you get into the jeep and i thought oh shit the game is actually starting now neat okay i think i have the basics of the mechanics down to be continued Mm -hmm. What the fuck? We, we haven't Seriously. seen an ending like this since Trine 3. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. was going to say since Lost, maybe. <laughs> well, to, 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 to bring it back to the pre pre super shows. And but I, to address what you were saying earlier, Ven, this does seem like an artsy thing because you look at what the uh, developers call themselves worm animation. Was a video game really the best medium for this quote unquote story? Heavy air quotes around the term story. Well, calling because this a who, short who the hell is the surfing guy? That's what I want to know. He's there, man. <laughs> you can name him whatever the fuck you want. Um, geez, man. How do I want to say this? At the end, of, uh, basically, you're looking at the video. If you listen to the audio, I mean, th this is an open sandbox type of thing maybe you want to call it that no no, no, no pun intended because there's so much sand well, there's <laughs> a lot. no there's even uh okay there is very clearly some environmental storytelling here because if you look around in the sand you can see like the top of an old street lamp you can see the sculptures that are half buried in the sand okay so this is sort of a post-apocalyptic thing and there's a zombie that only comes out at night and it sits below like a sun parasol thing because he's moon tanning, yeah. And, and yeah. there's that cat lady that I, I have no idea what her deal is, but she runs yeah. away from you. Yeah, there, there's a and bunch of questions I kind of want to know, the zombie answers, is called man. Bob. I want to know what Bob's motivations are. I, I don't didn't. know, maybe we should ask Frank. <laughs> yeah, you probably should, man, because those motherfuckers used to hang out back in the day. But that sandbox area, dude, that thing's like half the size of Peter Dinklage. And oh, yeah. And by the way, just a quick note, this bit right here that you're watching in the video, I literally got stuck in that lamp. Mm -hmm. That was me not being able to get away from it. Oh, 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 I've made him disappear completely where I had to go back into. I mean, just it, it's got some serious fucking bugs. Is it an art project? Yeah. Should it stay a fucking art project? Absolutely. Should you put your 999 art project on fucking Steam and try to call it a game? Fuck you. No, you shouldn't. You should know better. But then again, like six people have played this damn thing. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. This is the first time ever, absolutely forever, that... I would be 100% okay with with someone playing this, beating it in 30 minutes because it uh, 51 minutes was me over the period of three days dicking with it and asking for a refund and rightfully so. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I across the board, this is pretty much one chair for the fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. All right. Well, it gets two chairs at the end of it because it works. <laughs> it, it, it runs. That that's that's really all you need to get to these days, pretty much. I don't. I, I think we've pretty much torn this one a new one. I don't think there's much of a way for final thoughts. Well, don't, the, don't. the real thing is, man, there's not enough enough of it to tear it up anymore. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's it was criminally to begin short. With. Like seriously, the moment that I thought that the game was about to start, it ended. Mm. What the fuck? Begin <laughs> beginnings are end men are ends man. This is this is the true artistic statement of beat the game. Mm. Go you know what? Go beat yourself off. You'll you'll have a lot more fun than this game. <laughs> Coming up next, it's a very Jordan focused hate mail section this week. Uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Who 
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone in between. We're right about to wrap things up, but not before we let Jordan have a little bit of a spotlight on himself, because that's something that doesn't happen every day. But hey, if you want to shine a particular spotlight on any one of us, because we said some shit during the show you don't particularly agree with, by all means, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the thing, or if for some reason you're in a tight spot in your relationship and you want some relationship advice, by all means, pick that. Hey, if you man, want to send us games. Think about it. Like, on the off chance that there's ever <laughs> another Linux gaming podcast, we can be like, but we're the number one that also offers relationship advice. Listen, yes. we, 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 we just got uh, to narrow, narrow that margin. Right. <laughs> See, uh, so, so uh, how, how did they get in touch with us? Well, you already said well, whatever. Fill out the form. Yeah. Yep. Do the thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, some people actually sent over some relationship advice. So, Jordan, Tim would like to ask. Lately, I have been uh, texting a lot with a very cute lady. And if I'm lucky, we might meet again next week. Should I casually ask her if she has a boyfriend or is this a no-no question? Also, which of the following conversation topics is most suited? What people are referring to, Linux is in fact GNU slash Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather a free... Inc- incidentally, I have brought that up on text a text editor to Emacs. <laughs> 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 Refer to her as Milady while tipping my imaginary fedora or mention me. <laughs> who, despite well, not, being well, a complete not. imbecile, true story, uh, got a horse named after himself. Also a true story. <laughs> Much love, Team the Enchanter. So, so I, 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 I got, I got two, I got two potential branches here. Do you want, you want the serious <laughs> business answer? Or do you want the fucking goofy answer? Yes. Yes. All right, all right. So, goofy answer first. Yes, just l- don't mention anything. Let it fester, and then when you find out that she's not into you, just become all bitter and shitty and yell at her for no reason. Of course, you don't fucking do that. No, honestly, uh, communication is key, right? You, you gotta you gotta talk to her about that. If you're interested in her, let her know. Uh, just be prepared for the possibility that she may not be into you, and just don't be shitty about it. That that yeah. that's really it. Okay, um, um, riddle me this then. You go the date's great and everything. You get a call back and she, okay or he she whatever man. And they're all like, oh man, you're really interesting. You really digging the other person, right? And they're like, hey, let's go out again. Oh, but then you get a message later in the day. It's like, oh, I'm gonna be thirty minutes late. Like, what happened? And they're like, mm, well, you see, I'm a Windows system man. <laughs> well, at that point, you you have a choice. You can either you can either, you can either give up or work on corrupting them to the uh, to the Linux dark side, which is always always fun. It can be an interesting bonding experience, or it can set your relationship up in flames. But you know, all relationships carry an inherent risk to them. It may not work out. You just got to be aware of it. Um, as for as for the other things. Uh, you're a fucking heathen because Emacs is the superior text editor because I don't see you editing video in Vim. Um, you better do the second one, ironically, or else you are not going home with anyone unless she has problems, in which case, you know, maybe maybe, maybe you should talk to her about it. I don't know. And don't talk about Pedro. That's just good advice, period. It feeds his ego. He just loves it when people talk about him. So hey, man, ignore, it, it might not be the best way I to genuinely do. <laughs> big swing and a miss if the first thing you're mentioning on the first date is, yeah, the, this guy watching a podcast has got a horse name after him. <laughs> that, that, that might set up maybe a warning flag now, or two. Now, now to, to that point, if you have a horse named after you, that might be something you can use to break the ice. Hmm. <laughs> yes, call yourself Peter Mateusz. Go ahead. I never, I never said that. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> next, the next one is from Basse, uh, and he's talking about uh, something that I've actually tried before. He says, "Hey, I just listened to the latest episode, and one of you guys is in Helsinki, thinking of getting a burrito. Well, at first, welcome to Helsinki. Second, check out this place for something quite different." I'm um, a long-time listener. It's nice to hear someone is visiting our city, all our nice, although very rainy city from Basse. So he uh, 
posted a um, restaurant called Raventola Soba. Raventola apparently is the Finnish word for restaurant. At least that's what I've been able to put together. And they they have what is called a sushi burrito. Uh, there's actually a place in Toronto called Rot- Rotation that serves these things. They're essentially just like giant uncut maki rolls that are horrendously overpriced and really not that tasty. Um, thanks for the tip. Um, though, uh, good to see that there are some listeners in Finland. Maybe it will give me something to do as I reverse stock all of you. Oh, that could be brilliant, man. I mean, it's, uh, so things like that are one in a million that you can track like that. But burritos in Finland, you know, if I'm in Finland and you're not getting a top notch burrito, fucking suck it up. You're in Finland, you know? I, I'm just saying they they started baking a burrito and somehow got it confused with an enchilada. I wasn't <laughs> complaining. I was just stating the facts. Yeah, well, they were just putting sauce on it. They're like in Finland, our burritos bleed. Mm. <laughs> they bleed. I would actually uh, eat a burrito that bleed and enjoy it. I would probably eat a burrito if it screamed. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. Scre- scream, Screaming Burrito is an awesome band name, by the way. Screaming Burrito, man. That is uh, my Jack Black cover band. Uh, don't ask. Okay. All right. All right. Wait, we, one more. We, we, we got one more. Who's someone who wants to try and stalk me? Um, says, where is Jordan this week in Germany? I want to stalk him. Greeting from uh, Julian from Braunschweig, Germany. Um, Close enough. I'm, I'm going to be in Germany. Braunschweig. Whatever. Um, I I don't speak German. Drink too. I don't. I don't. I don't speak <laughs> the Deutsch. So you know, go fuck yourself then. I asked you. To, I asked you to teach me, and you were too lazy. So that. So I like to say. This In my fucking fault. defense, would you teach you? Would I teach me a language that I don't speak? Would yes. you? I, okay. <laughs> Point proven right there. He is clinically fucking ill. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to be in Germany for precisely one hour after we're done this show. So, uh, if you if you can if you can uh, if you can navigate the Munich airport and find my ass um, and stab me, you've earned it. Uh, I actually have my life insurance paying out to whoever kills me because I want it to be like a video game monster who drops fat loot after you murder me. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I, I think we might even like pick you a game of your choice if you can snap a picture of him in the airport without setting off his alarm so he doesn't know yeah d- he can't know about it mm-hmm. <laughs> the yeah. first thing he knows about it is us showing him the picture that's yeah, it you, you gotta straight up creep on him i mean like do us- it. yeah as close as uh, you fucking can <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring, bring it on, bring it on, muffin. Oh, no, or, um, no, no, I'm I, just I, thinking, I got a schnitzel. Is, no, that, is, oh. is, is that a, is that a cute pet name in Germany? Dude, we, we just get a picture of you sleeping in bed at home. In Canada, you get a picture of me on the crapper from the perspective of like the person looking directly in. If you can pull that off, <laughs> mad props. You earn that one. Uh, uh, you know what? I think on that bombshell, let's go ahead and cue the music. You can always find us normally around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. We did this one early. We're going to try to do, we're not 100%, maybe one every other month a bit early. Kind of, but we're definitely going to be doing some more early shows because hashtag Fentland time. And yeah. um, that's the thing. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vinstone, Twitter, search for Vinstone. I'm around. Send us some hate mail. Hit that contact button. Let us know. Hey, we got a brand new overhauled forum. Chat room static is back, baby. Uh, all your old logins, everything should work. It's all fancy and vanilla-fied. Still doing some work on that color scheme. Well, I should say Pedro will soon be because he volunteered <laughs> yes, to do it. Yes, just give me the CSS file. I'll take care of it. Oh, oh, you think it's going to be that? It's not going to be that uh, simple. It's, it's uh, going to be unicorns. Shit. <laughs> unicorns all over the place. It is a, 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 an adulterated nightmare fuel because they tried to make it easy, and by doing that, they've made it so stupidly complicated. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm Jordan Spung. You can find me um, being incredibly sleep deprived and answering your relationship questions <laughs> because God damn it, I've failed a lot. So learn from my failures at the Burning Pool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Spung on Google Plus. And you can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter when I'm well. Probably over the next week, I'll be busy trying to make uh, Shet Realm static. Not so hard to read on a, you know, phone screen while you're out and about no, 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 in daylight. Hey, hey, uh, hey. A flip phone screen. <laughs> the, the regular... Flip phone screen, I, yes. I, I was going to 
like cut you some slack there and i'm like yeah maybe a little i mean i can read it fucking fine on all the different monitors i have then you're like flip phone i was like uh okay maybe outdoors and like yeah in sunlight i'm like hey, go fuck yourself pedro seriously you couldn't read anything uh, upside down on alternating Tuesdays right. while bees are chasing you. I mean, when people go out of the house, Underwater. sometimes it's daytime. So, yeah. Uh, well, well, so, well, yeah, and I'll probably be doing that. But uh, the rest of the time, I'll probably be on Google+. Plus. That's Plus Pillar Mateos. That's the best way you can get in touch with me. All right. Um, we learned a lot this week, uh, didn't we? No, not really. No. 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 Well, come on. Uh, well, actually, no. Pedro learned what a comma slice is. This is true. Oh yes, that mm-hmm. is true. Yes, I learned that earlier today. That's fucking glorious. Uh, Die to fire, everyone. Let's get those credits going on. Yeah. Hail Santa! <laughs> Dur- ah! Dirty, dirty faces there. <laughs> yeah, I still got to do that double key on this. <laughs> oh, I should just have like find. I am sure somebody's. Like made a video of uh, just like Jar Jar doing like poetry, so. <laughs> racist racist poetry. <laughs> if if so, if someone has Ahmed Best's uh, contact info, send it our way because God damn it, just God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be money well spent. That's all we're saying. Well, the scary uh, thing is that's his actual voice. He doesn't do like the racist speaking, but like he sounds like Jar Jar normally when he talks. Yeah, he does. And but you also got to think just being the voice because he's like, shoo, I dodged that bullet because they were thinking about putting him in as the character and like just CGIing the head. Oh, yeah. You, you, and you've you've seen you've seen like the, the stills of that where he's just walking around mm-hmm. with like the stupid dumbass Jar Jar head. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> See, I, I feel that would have made the Phantom, Phantom Menace a lot better, in my opinion. <laughs> Man, well, the fan- there are a the, lot the of fan- things that would have made the Phantom Menace better. It's a really shit movie. Five dudes. <laughs>